Hello and welcome to all participants from around the world. My name is Arya Pruma and welcome to today's webinar. Today I will be going over solving system of equations problems with three variables. And today we will be going over a few variations of these kinds of problems. In addition, please keep in mind that this session will be recorded and will be posted to our website shortly after this session. And the link to that is pasted in the chat and is also displayed on the screen you are viewing. With this, let's get started with our very first question. All right, so the very first question we'll be doing today is x minus 2y plus z equals 5, 2x plus y minus z equals negative 1, and 3x plus 3y minus 2z equals negative 4. So as you can see, this is an example of a system of equations problem with three variables. And the format is similar to that of a system of equations problem with two variables, except there are three variables and three separate equations. So I'm just going to name the first one equation one, name the second one equation two, and name the third one equation three. So as you can see, there are three separate equations. And the idea is similar, knowing that we need to eliminate a variable. So in order to do this, we actually need to split this problem into two separate questions or two separate system of equation problems. And this is simply to ensure that we can efficiently isolate or eliminate a variable. So what you need to do is you need to select an equation. So you can either select equation one, equation two, or equation three. So for this example, I'm just going to be selecting equation one. So you're going to write that in two separate system of equations problems. And you want to take the remaining two equations here, and you want to also write those in your two separate system of equations problems. So we have equation two remaining, and we have equation three also remaining. So we want to also write equation two here, 2x plus y minus z is equal to negative one, and as well as equation three, 3x plus 3y minus 2z equals negative four. So just to quickly go over what I have done so far, all I've essentially done is split this initial problem, which had three separate equations, into two separate problems, which have two equations each. And this is simply just so we can make it really easy to eliminate a variable. And remember, the idea is same. In order to uh, solve for your values of x, y, and z, which is what we're trying to accomplish here, we're trying to solve for the values of our variables. In order to do that, we need to isolate for a variable. And we can only do that when there are two equations. So what I've done is essentially I've split them up into two separate system of equations problems. So remember, this is equation one that I've took. And this is equation two and equation three. Similarly, you can choose any equation you'd like. For example, if you wanted to choose equation two, you could choose equation two and put that as your equation for your two separate system of equations problems. And then taking equation one and three in your remaining two equations, you would put them inside your two separate system of equations problems. So I'm going to name this system of equations problem I've created as problem one or question one and question two. So essentially all we need to do is we need to isolate a variable for both and we need to kind of solve for both in order to receive our values for our variables. So the idea is the exact same. We need to eliminate variables in both. So first I'm gonna be looking at this one I've created, question one or problem one. And this is x minus two y plus z equals five. And your second equation is two x plus y minus z is equal to negative one. And remember in order to um, eliminate for a variable, what you need to do is essentially look at the coefficients of 
your variables. And you want one coefficient to be the negative version of your other one. So I'll just demonstrate what I mean by this. So first, in order to carry out these kinds of problems, you need to actually select what, what variable here you're aiming to eliminate. So in the case of this problem, I'm going to eliminate variable z. So eliminating variable z here, we need to take a look at the coefficients of z in our first equation and our second equation. So taking a look at our coefficient of z in equation one here, we have coefficient of z as just positive one. And looking at our second equation in our first problem we've created, we have coefficient of z as negative one. So in order to actually eliminate for a variable, remember what we're doing is essentially when you have a system of equations problem, you're essentially adding all the terms up. You're essentially adding all of the equations. You're adding these equations. So if you wanted to eliminate a variable, one would have to be a negative version of the other. And that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here. So I've selected variable z to eliminate. So taking a look at the coefficients of z, one coefficient of z is just one and the other one is negative one. So as you can see, if you were to add z and negative z, those would actually cancel out to z minus z, which would be zero. So that would easily be able to eliminate for a variable z. So similarly, you could select variable x, for example, and you would need to multiply both equations by something in order to achieve the negative coefficient for both of these variables. And that's what I'll be demonstrating for question or question number two or problem number two I've created here. So just taking a look at this one, we are now going to be adding the equations. As we already know, just by the problem, we have plus one or positive one over here and we have negative one over here. So if we added these two, those would just eliminate. So this is a similar idea to solving system of equations with two variables as we want to do the exact same thing as looking for opposite coefficients in order to eliminate a variable. So now I'm going to add this equation. So we have first x plus 2x, which is simply 3x. We have minus 2y plus y, which is simply negative y. Then we have z minus z, which is essentially just zero. And then we have five minus one, which is essentially just four. So this is our answer to this system of equations problem we've created, but this is not the final answer as we still need to solve for our individual variables here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do the exact same thing for this problem we've created. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to essentially do the exact same thing by eliminating a variable. A very important thing to keep in mind when doing this is you have to eliminate the exact same variable in our problem number two as you did in problem number one. So for example, in problem number one, I eliminated for variable Z. So you have to also eliminate for variable Z in problem number two that you've created. You can't just eliminate for variable X or Y, you have to eliminate for Z. Similarly, for example, if you eliminated for a variable y over here, you would have to eliminate for variable y over here as well. So remember to eliminate the exact same variable in both of these problems. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing by eliminating the exact same variables. And keep in mind, it is the same idea as we're going to be adding these equations. However, keep in mind, we do want to eliminate variable z. So let's take a look at the coefficients of variable z for both of these equations, equation one and equation three. So taking a look at the coefficient of variable z for equation one, the coefficient of variable z, it's just z here, so the coefficient will just be one. Similarly, over here in equation number three, the coefficient of variable z over here is negative two. So these are our coefficients. So if we added these, it would actually not eliminate z. When you add the z terms, they would actually not equal to zero as the terms, the coefficients of z are not negative of each other. So in order to do this, we need to multiply both equations by something in order to achieve that characteristic, in order to achieve a negative version 
or negative coefficients for both of your z variables in our first equation and our third equation. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just quickly rewrite this over here, equals 5 and 3x plus 3y minus 2z equals negative 4. And essentially, all I'm going to do is I am going to multiply both equations by something in order to achieve a opposite coefficient for z. So looking at this, we have negative 2 over here. So if we multiplied, if we multiplied this first equation, if we multiplied this first equation by 2, just positive 2, you would see that when you further simplify this, it would be 2x minus 2y plus minus 4y plus 2z equals 10. And we have 3, 3x plus 3y minus 2z is equal to negative 4. If we were to do this, essentially what would happen is, as you can see, we have a plus 2z here, and we have a minus 2z here. So if you actually added those, you could easily eliminate for variable z. So all you're essentially trying to do is you're trying to multiply both equations by something, and you can just say we've multiplied this equation by 1 as it remains the same. So we basically are trying to multiply both equations by something so we can achieve the negative coefficient of one of our equations. So for example, we have positive 2 as a coefficient for z here, and we have a negative 2 as the coefficient for z over here. So we're trying to basically achieve the same number as coefficient, but one should be negative and one should be positive. So when we add them, that would eliminate and equal to 0. So now we can simply just add this. So adding this, going to be adding these two equations. And now when you do 2x plus 3x, that would equal 5x. If you do minus 4y plus 3y, that would equal minus y. If you do 2z plus negative 2z, that would be 0. And if you do 10 minus 4, that would be 6. So this is our solution to this second system of equations problem we've created. So we have this from our first one first system of equations problem we've created. And we have this from our second system of equations problem we've created. And as you can see, in both of these equations that we got for our answer, variable z is actually eliminated. So now this makes it very, very easy using the information we've obtained to solve for variables x and y. So then we can get the value for variable z also. And this is what we want. We want to figure out the numerical values of x, y, and z. So I'm just going to name this equation, equation four, as we have equation one, two, and three here. So equation four over here. And I'm just going to just simply name this equation five to just make it easier to know what equation I'm talking about. So now that we have these two equations established, what you want to do is we're going to follow the exact same process as this solving system of equations with two variables now. So as you can see, I'm going to take these two equations we obtained and now write another system of equations problem using these two, ver two, these two equations we've obtained. So we have 3x minus y equals 4, and we have 5x minus y is equal to 6. So this was equation 4, and this was kind of like equation 5. So now we want to follow the exact same process as solving system of equations with two variables, as I previously mentioned. So we're going to be doing the same thing, and we're just going to be isolating or eliminating a variable. So eliminating for it, we need to keep in mind, we need to, we need to do the exact same thing as we did over here, and that is just basically multiplying both equations by something so we can obtain negative versions of the coefficients for both. So first, we have to first establish what variable we are trying to eliminate here. So you can choose to eliminate either variable x or variable y, but in the case of this problem, I'm just going to decide to eliminate variable y as it's a bit easier. So I'm just going to 
um, multiply both equations by something in order to achieve the opposite coefficients for equation four and equation five. So if I multiplied this first equation, equation four here, by one or by negative one, if I multiplied this by negative one, and I multiplied the, se the second one or fifth equation here by just, just one, simply just one, let's see what this equates to. Let's see what happens here. So now we have negative three X plus Y equals negative four. And over here we have five X minus Y equals six. And now we have this as our new simplified version of our equations. So now, as you can see, we have a plus y here and we have a minus y here. So now it is very, very, very simple to eliminate for y as when you add these two equations up, you can actually make them add to zero. You can actually make y and minus y that will actually add to zero, which will eliminate y altogether, making it very easy to solve for x. So let's add these equations up. We now have, we have minus three X plus five X, which is two X. We have Y minus Y, that's just zero. And then we have minus four plus six, which is positive two. And then just using our simple solving of algebraic linear equations, we can divide both sides by two to isolate for X, just basically dividing both sides by two to isolate for X there. And doing that, we have X is equal to one. So now we've established our value for x. And now we can also easily establish our values for y and z as well, given our value for x, which we just figured out. So now what we want to do is we want to substitute this value of x we figured out into any one of these two equations with x and y, containing x and y. So you can either substitute the value of x that you figured out into equation four or equation five. It's your choice. So for the example of this problem, I'm just going to be substituting it into equation four, but you could also substitute into equation five if you wish. So I'm going to be substituting now and I'll, I'll do three times one, which keep in mind was our value for x as we established. So I'm just going to substitute or plug in our value of x there minus y equal to four. So now this gives us three minus y is equal to four. We have minus y is equal to one and dividing both sides by negative one to isolate for variable y, we have y is equal to negative one. So this is our value for y. We've established this, our value for y. We've established our value for x. And now we are very close to solving this problem as all we need to do now is establish our value for variable z. And I'm just going to be doing this over here. So I'm just going to be continuing this over here. So now we need to figure out our value for variable z. And in order to do this, we're going to be following the exact same idea as substituting our given values. And we're just going to be taking any one of these three equations which contain x, y, and z because we do have values of x and y. So we're going to be taking any one of those two, one of any one of those three equations and we're just going to be substituting those into those, any of those three equations. So I'm just going to select equation one to substitute our values into, but you can select any equation you'd like. So substituting into equation one here, we're going to Substitute, so we know that X is equal to one. So we have one minus two times negative one because that is our value for Y, which we established, plus Z is equal to five. And I was going to write this in different colors so you know what our values for X and Y, were, y are and what we are actually substituting into our first equation, equation one. So Actually, this is from equation one. So equation one. I basically substituted our values into equation one. But you could also select equation two or three to substitute your values into. So now we're just going to solve like a regular linear algebraic equation. So we have now, we have 
1 plus 2 plus z equals 5. And then we have 3 plus z equals 5. And then we have z is equal to 2. So now we have our value for z. And all I've done is just simply solve algebraically from here by isolating for x, just subtracting 3 on both sides like you would normally solve an algebraic equation. So now, therefore, we have gotten all three of our desired values. We've gotten value for x, which is 1, value for y, which is negative 1, and then value for z, which is 2. So I'm just going to write over here, therefore, x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 1, and z is equal to 2. And this is exactly how you would solve a system of equations problem with three variables. And this is exactly how you would determine your values of your unknown variables. So great, now that we've established how to solve this, I'm going to provide you with one more example and I'm going to be doing one more question with you on this topic as well. And the idea would be the exact same, except there are a few minor differences. So we're gonna be going over that right now. So question number two is 5a minus 4b plus 3c equals negative 4. Our second equation would be 10, negative 10a plus 8b minus 6c equals 8. Third equation, 15a minus 12 b plus 9c is equal to negative 12 here. So this is our system of equations problem with three variables. And I'm just going to name this one equation one like I did previously, equation two, and equation three. So I have named these equations. And as you can see, the format of this is the exact same as our first question we've solved today just previously. And as you can see, there are three variables as well as three separate equations. So we can actually go about this the exact same way. So we're going to be doing the exact same thing. But later on, you'll see that there are a few minor differences. And I'll be going over those with you when we get to those parts of the question. So we're going to do the exact same thing. And just going to be splitting these three equations into two separate solving system of equations problems. And you have to first select an equation of your choice. I'm going to be selecting equation one again, but remember you can select equation two or equation three if you desire. And now we're going to just simply write those equations down here. So we have 5a minus 4b plus 3c equals negative four. And then in our second system of equations problem, I'm going to be writing the exact same thing. Okay, so now that we've written the first question, we've selected our equation, we actually have to now write our two remaining equations in there. So we have equation two and we have equation three. So we're going to be solving those two separate system of equations problems. So what we're going to be doing is taking equation two, I'm just going to write that here, minus 10a plus 8b minus 6c equals 8. And then we have 15a minus 12b plus 9c is equal to negative 12. So this is essentially our third equation and our second equation. And we've just combined these with our first equations to solve two separate system of equations problems. Keep in mind that you could have selected equation three or equation two to go over here, and then you could have put equation one, equation three in your two separate system of equations problems. So it's according to whatever you wish to do. So now that we've established this, what we're going to be doing now is we need to follow the exact same process as before, and we need to try to isolate or eliminate for a variable. So eliminating for a variable, we need to first choose what variable to eliminate for. So we have question, we have question one or system of equations problem one that we've created, and then we have system of equations problem two, which we've created, and we have to eliminate a variable in both. So first let's pay attention to this first problem. 
So in order to do this, what you need to do is you need to pick which variable you are trying to eliminate. So what you're trying to eliminate is whatever you choose to eliminate, the whatever variable you would like to eliminate. And in this case, I'm just going to be eliminating variable A in the case of this problem. But keep in mind, you can also eliminate variable B or C if you wish. So eliminating variable A for this problem, we need to take a look at the coefficients of A in both our equations. So taking a look at this one, we have, we have five here as a coefficient of A, and then we have negative 10 there as the coefficient of A also. So what we need to do is we need to multiply both equations by something. Remember, this is the exact same thing we did previously. We want to multiply both equations by something in order to achieve the negative version of the number for the coefficients of the variables. So since we have a negative 10A here and we have a 5A there, if we multiplied this by two and this by one, this two would actually multiply with 5a, which would give you 10a. And if you added those, which is what we're trying to do, we're trying to add them. If you added those, a variables would actually eliminate. So let's try doing this. So then we have just solving this, we have just applying distributed property 10a minus 8b plus 6c equals negative 8. And in our second equation here, we have negative 10a plus 8b minus 6c is equal to 8. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to just denote what equation these are. So this is equation one, this is equation two. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to be now adding our equations up. So adding them up, let's add them up now. So we have 10a minus 10a, which is zero. We have minus 8b plus 8b, which is zero. We have 6c minus 6c, which is zero. And then we have minus eight plus eight, which is zero. So as you can see, what happens is when you add these two equations up, what actually occurs is it just adds to zero. So whenever you add these two equations up, it'll just add to zero. And usually in our previous question, we actually got an equation when we isolated or we eliminated for a variable, we actually got an equation with the two other variables which we kept. But this is not the case for this problem. When you add these, it just equals to zero. And this actually is a unique situation which indicates that there is an infinite number of solutions. So there's actually no set solution or set value for A, B, or C, but rather there is an infinite number of solutions for A, B, and C. And that's basically what this indicates if you got zero when you added the equations. So we know for sure there is an infinite number of solutions, but just to check, I'm also going to be doing the exact same thing for this problem number two we've created. And let's see if that also equals zero. So over here, we want to do the exact same thing. We need to eliminate for the exact same variable. We chose to eliminate over here and I eliminated it for variable A over here. So we have to do the exact same thing over here. So now we have to also eliminate for variable A. So taking a look at this, we have 15A there and then we have 5A over here. So what we want to do is if we actually multiplied this whole thing, multiplied this whole thing by negative three, what you could see is that this negative three would actually multiply with this 5a, which would give you negative 15a. And then when adding those, the variables in terms of a would cancel out, giving you zero and allowing you to eliminate for variable a. So let's see, let's try this. So now applying distributed property for this equation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just simply solve this. So we have minus three times 5a, which is negative 15a, we have minus 4b times minus 3, which is 12b. We have minus 3 times 3c, which is negative 9c. And then we have minus 4 times minus 3, which just equates to positive 12. And then over here, we're just going to simply just multiply this equation by 1. So we can actually eliminate for A because we have a negative 15 there. So if we achieve the opposite 
coefficient or negative version of the coefficient for our second equation, then we could easily add and eliminate for our variable. So what we need to do is I'm just going to write this equation as it is, plus 9c is equal to negative 12. And now following the exact same thing, we are going to just simply add the equations. So adding them, we are trying to keep in mind, we're trying to eliminate for variable a. So we're going to eliminate for it. So we have negative 15a plus 15a. That gives you 0. We have 12b minus 12b gives you 0 also. We have minus 9c plus 9c, which is also 0. And then we have 12 minus 12, and that's also 0. So as you can see, when you also solve for this system of equations problem number two, which you've created, our second problem, which we've created, this also gives us a value of zero. You get zero in both. So now you can confirm that there is indeed an infinite number of solutions, because remember, when you add our two equations and you get a value of zero, this means there is no set value for variables A, B, and C, and rather there's an infinite number of solutions. So you can just go ahead and conclude that therefore, there are an infinite number of solutions. And this is basically what you can go ahead and conclude from this problem. All right, great. So with that, we're actually reaching an end of today's webinar. And And I just wanted to say thank you so much for attending today's webinar. I sincerely hope you enjoyed and was able to take away something new and useful from today's session. Just another friendly reminder that this session is recorded and will be posted to our website shortly after this session. And the link to that is in the chat and is also displayed on the screen you are viewing right now. In addition, the next webinar will be next week and it will be on the topic of learning to simplify algebraic expressions using the properties of exponents. So please check out our website for info on how you can register for that webinar. In addition, please keep in mind that these sessions are free. So if you know anyone who is interested or would benefit from these sessions, please feel free to let them know so they may register. Once again, thank you to all participants from around the world for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you for our next week's webinar and any of our upcoming webinars. Thank you and bye.